Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our lectionary podcast. Today we begin a, a new year, and uh, the church year is a great blessing. For um, through it, we uh, focus our lives on the life of Christ. And the church year, of course, begins with Advent, the coming of our Lord. And uh, when we think of Advent, we think of his second coming, uh, which we um, anticipated at the end of the church year as well. Uh, we look uh, forward to his coming into the world as a, as a little child in Bethlehem, is coming to earth from heaven above to earth I come. And then uh, today, it's a little bit strange, I suppose, but this is the traditional reading for the first Sunday in Advent, which is, of course, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Now, in some ways, this is not the uh, text that I would have chosen for Advent. Um, I think of the prophecies of the Old Testament pointing to Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Uh, but there is something very good about this because what it does is it ties Bethlehem to Jerusalem. So much of our Christmas celebration, of course, we see very little of Christ in it. In the old saying, put Christ back in Christmas. But the other part is um, often we don't see the cross in it so that uh, there's a sentimental picture of Christmas that loses sight of the reason that Jesus, in fact, came to us because all along he came to be a member of our human family that he might pay the price for our sin, that as one of us he might uh, take the judgment which belonged to us. And so it is we begin with our entry into Jerusalem. And it says that as they were nearing into Jerusalem, they came into Bethphage um, to the, the Mount of Olives. So right away you can see that Matthew is, um, is going towards the Passion. The Mount of Olives is the place where uh, Christ is most sorely tempted uh, and tried and tested. And it's there that his soul will be sorrowful unto death, that uh, three times he will ask that the cup of suffering, the cup of wrath be taken away from him. Uh, but he will say, thy will be done, and thus work his way to the cross. So this becomes a very heightened part of the story. We move from all of the discourses to the, the passion itself. So Jesus enters to the Mount of Olives and... Um, he sends, so a little, a little apostolic sending here, um, then Jesus sent two disciples. And he gives them some specific instructions. He says, go into the village in front of you, and you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them, uh, loosen them, and bring them to me. So, uh, this looks a little bit like, I suppose, like the Great Commission. He sends them, and you're going to go, and this is a small commission. Um, what this tells us is that, uh, again, as Jesus enters Jerusalem, he is in control of the situation. He goes to suffer, but he goes willingly, and this is according to God's good plan, so that um, he knows uh, that now, why is it that there will be this, um, this donkey and a colt with her? Well, um, if, someone says, if someone says to you and asks you, say then, I love this uh, phrase, the Lord has need of, of them. So, the, our Lord knows um, the plan and uh, immediately he did send them out. Now this is very Mathean in that he sees all of Christ's life and now his death as being in fulfillment of the scriptures. So as Micah said that Christ would be uh, born in Bethlehem, so also the passion or the death of Christ is part of God's greater plan. It's scripted uh, by God himself. And this was, this is something we saw in Matthew, we saw five fulfillment, uh, direct scripture fulfillments 
in, in the birth story, so also we see that same pattern in the passion of our Lord where the events are scripted according to the Old Testament. So all of this is to happen so that it might be fulfilled the word which came through the prophet saying. So this is through the prophet saying, and this is Zechariah, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. So to the daughter of Zion, to Jerusalem, Behold, your king is coming to you. And what kind of king is he? He's humble or he's meek, and he's riding upon a, a donkey and um, a beast of uh, the foal or the the son of a beast of the son or a foal of a beast of burden. So it's important that this is, now this is the kind of thing that we would see uh, David or Solomon or one of the Old Testament kings when they would come into Jerusalem. It's both a sign of humility and it's a sign of Jesus' um, kingship, his royalty. And uh, as this, this takes us back, I suppose, to again the birth story, we're waiting for the king of kings to come. The king of kings, uh, Jesus, is born, remember, in Bethlehem, which is the city of, of, of David. Uh, therefore, he is the king. Um, Herod sees this, although he doesn't understand it, and that Herod sees Jesus as a threat to his kingship because he thinks that Jesus has come to be an earthly king. Uh, well, now we see the kind of king that Jesus was born to be. He will ride in triumphantly and yet humbly into Jerusalem. He was born to die. He comes riding in on a donkey, according to the prophets, um, in order to win for us salvation. He is the king of kings, and um, his name, you shall call his name Jesus, Matthew says, because he will save his people from their sins. So the apostles... Um, to going out, the apostles went out, and uh, they did just as our Lord had commanded them. So um, the, the disciples are truly good disciples here. They do as the Lord commanded, and we get this emphasis again um, that on the donkey and the colt, they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them so they brought the donkey and the colt and they placed upon them garments and he sat upon them now this is a kind of funny thing um, back in the back in the day when people were worried about the contradictions in the bible this was that and of course most of the, most of the supposed contradictions were kind of silly um, but this was one of the ones that they would bring up because oh Look, it says that Jesus sat on them. How could Jesus sat, sit on a, on a donkey and a colt? Well, it doesn't say that. Um, he says they placed garments and then Jesus sat upon them. Jesus sat upon the garments. Um, so he's ready for his triumphal entry and the people do give him a greeting. So it says that... Um, I guess the most placed us, most of the crowd, um, what they did was they placed their garments or spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and they spread them on the road. Or maybe we want to say upon the way. So prepare the royal highway. That's a, a theme for, for uh, Advent. This is what John the Baptist uh, does in Advent. We're going to see in the weeks to come is that John the Baptist will prepare the way for the Lord. Well, this is also a preparation for the, for the coming of the king. Now, um, we do know when Jesus was born that Matthew says that Jerusalem was disturbed. Um, it says King Herod was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. Uh, but at this point, as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, he, uh, the, the crowds are there and um, 
they recognize at least that uh, something major is happening. So the fact that they cut branches from the trees, by the way, we do know that from the, the Gospel of, of John that this is, these are palm branches. And uh, so this is the, the traditional text also for Palm Sunday. Um, but it's their way of acknowledging that Jesus is the king. What kind of a king he is, maybe they have not yet uh, figured out. Um, it's a mysterious and glorious kingship which will result in uh, him being crowned not with gold but with thorns and reigning there, li being lifted up upon the, upon the cross. Now, uh, as, as we go further, um, it is we see in verse 9 uh, that the crowds, again, it's an ambiguous term, the crowds that were going forward uh, ahead of him and those who were following him cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, I just love this scene. In one sense, you could say Jesus has this entourage or some, some are ahead of him and some are behind him. I do think this is a great picture of the church throughout all time and place, which is to say, I, you know, when you think about the saints in heaven, there are the 144,000, uh, there are the 12 tribes of Israel, and then there are the 12 apostles. And there is a sense with Jesus' coming, um, those who came before, John the Baptist and all the prophets come before Jesus. And then there are the apostles, and then there's the church today that follows after Jesus, that we're all in this great line or this great train surrounding our Lord. He is the center of all history. So everything in Advent looks forward to the coming of the Christ, and then everything again looks forward to his return and celebrates what Christ has done. Christ is the center of all history. And together, therefore, with the Old Testament saints and the saints of old, together, um, we bless the Lord um, with them. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Uh, sounds, like a, sounds like a Christmas hymn. Um, Hosanna in the highest. Uh, it means help or save us. Uh, and... We're crying out to the Lord for his salvation. He is coming to do what he has promised to do. It's a very exciting time, even as it's, it's awe-inspiring and also humbling, I suppose, to think that our, the Lord of all, the king, would um, do this on behalf of people like us. And then another Mathean kind of... Um, twist, I suppose, is as he was coming into Jerusalem, so that's again um, towards the Passion, it says that all the city, Pasa Polis, all the city uh, shook or was shaken. This is Esaias there. This is, um, uh, this is the language of the earthquake. Now this is Again, this, Matthew is brilliant here because he ties the beginning of his gospel to the end of the gospel. So when Jesus was born, all of Jerusalem was disturbed. They were stirred up. They were shaken by the birth of Jesus. We also know that at the death of Jesus, that the ground, and the, the, the ground itself was shaking. There was an earthquake and, and the saints rose up from their graves and walked into the into the holy city. Well, so also as Jesus is entering into Jerusalem, the city itself is, is shaking in anticipation of what our Lord has come to do. These are the, in some sense, they're the birth pangs. Uh, uh, the earth itself, the city is uh, in tumult because of, uh, because of the great things that our Lord has come to to do. Now, uh, verse 11, therefore the crowd said, and the crowds here, it seems like they're getting it right, 
the crowds said or were saying, um, oh, well, maybe they're not. This is the prophet Jesus. You see, the one from Nazareth of Galilee. In one sense, you can see that the, the crowds, they recognize that Jesus is the king, but there is something missing here because um, while this is a confession of sorts, they see Jesus as a prophet, they don't yet see him as the Son of God. So um, when you think about, the, and again, th this is usually when people are talking about Jesus, if you want to confess him to be the king, you say this is the one that is born in Bethlehem, the son of David, but they say this, he is from Nazareth of Galilee, which is a, is a way of downplaying who Jesus is. Uh, the other part is, again, when you say Jesus is simply a prophet, um, we need a better confession than that. Jesus is not simply a prophet. Um, in the Sermon on the Mount, in the Gospel of Matthew, he is, says when he, be, he opened his mouth and he began to speak, prophets hear the word of God and then they tell us what God has said. Jesus himself is the divine source. Jesus himself, more than a prophet, is God's son. And we anticipate, as the crowds in Jerusalem call him a prophet, they say, Remember, that Jesus will cry out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, and the people will think, oh, he's crawling out for Elijah, because they can't quite see that it's, it's really quite heartbreaking that Jesus is more than a prophet. He's more than Elijah. Um, but a centurion will understand, and a centurion will make the confession, as do we in the church, that Jesus is not simply a prophet, but he is, in fact, the Son of God. Surely this was the Son of God. This is the confession we make when Jesus is upon the cross. This is the confession we will make when Jesus returns again on that last day. And it's the confession we make at Christmas when we see the uh, baby Jesus in the manger um, being held by his mother Mary, being born there in, in Bethlehem, Bethlehem. We make the confession again that Jesus is the king and he is the son of God who has come to save us. So I, with that I uh, wish you blessings upon uh, your advent and your preparations um, for Christmas and I look forward to the next time we are together. Thank you.